Okay, in this next problem involving trig, sometimes you may have to do Le Hopital's rule multiple times in order to get the answer. Le Hopital's rule, you can keep on doing the derivative, the top and bottom, as many times as necessary until you, you get rid of the zero over zero or an infinity over infinity situation. So uh, if you keep on working and it's not working out the first or second time, keep on going. You might have to do it three or four times possibly to get it to work out. So that's what we're going to show on this one. Okay, so. If I put zero in the top, zero times anything is zero. If I put zero in these down below, I'll get a zero as well, which means definitely we have to start by using Le Hopital's. So the first thing we're gonna do is take the derivative of the top and the bottom. Top part's gonna require a product rule. Now you could multiply the x out as well, but no matter what, you're still gonna end up with an x cosine, so you have to use uh, the product rule anyway, so we might as well just go ahead and start by doing that. We got the first thing times the derivative of the second. The derivative of this, of cosine, is negative sine, but because you have a minus sign there, that means you're gonna get a positive, so you're gonna get x sine x. Then we have plus the second piece, one minus cosine x, and then derivative of the first, derivative of x is one, so we don't have to show that, so that will be the derivative for the, the top part. Down below, derivative of three x is three, and then we have, uh, for this part, uh, derivative of sine is cosine, so minus cosine 3x and then times 3. Let's check it out by putting in a 0. 0, this part's going to give you a 0 there. Cosine of 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So we, we get a 0 on the top. Now if I put 0 in down to this piece, cosine of 0 is 1, so you get 3 minus 3. That's 0 again. So yeah, we have to do the Hobbitol's rule another time. Alright, so let's do that again. We're going to apply the derivative to the top and bottom separately. That's, this part here requires us to do another product rule. Okay, so we got first thing, derivative of sine is cosine, plus the second piece, which is sine x, and then times derivative of the first, derivative of x is gonna be one, so we don't need to show that. This part, derivative of one is zero, derivative of cosine is negative sine times a negative again, so you're gonna get a positive sine x there. Let's take a look at the bottom. The derivative of three is zero. And then this part, I have a negative three, which I have here, and I'm multiplying it by the derivative of cosine three x. Derivative of cosine is negative sine, so I have negative sine three x. And then don't forget again, you gotta multiply by the three, doing the chain rule once again. Let's do a simplifying step first before we plug the zero in. Okay, we're gonna do limit, x goes to zero. Let's simplify the top, x cosine x plus two sine x, and then down below, negative negative will give you a positive nine, and then sine uh, three x. We gotta check it again by putting zero in top and bottom. If I put zero in, this first part's gonna be zero, sine of zero is zero, so we still get a zero on top. Down below, sine of zero is zero, so once again, we get another zero over zero situation. We gotta apply Le Hopital's another time. Okay, so now we're gonna do Derivative, top and bottom again. This part requires us to do a product rule. Okay, so first thing, derivative of x, then derivative of cosine is negative sine, plus the second piece, which is cosine. Derivative of the first is one, we don't need to show that. We still gotta do the derivative of this one. Derivative of two sine x is gonna be two cosine x. On the bottom, I have a nine uh, what the derivative of that is going to be 9 cosine 3x, but then a 3 comes out there again for that one. Again, don't forget that extra 3 there. It's a chain rule. Okay, so we did derivative of the top, derivative of the bottom. Let's simplify it. Okay, limit x goes to 0. We're going to do negative x sine x plus a 3 cosine of x. In the bottom, we have a 27 cosine 3x. If I put a zero into the top part, I get a zero for the first piece. However, if I put a zero in there, this time I'm not gonna get a zero on top, so I know that I don't need to do any more derivatives. Okay, so let's go ahead and work this out. We're gonna we get a zero for this first piece plus three times uh, one, because again, cosine of zero is one. Down below, you're gonna have a 27 times uh, a cosine of zero, which is one again. So then we end up getting three over 27 
which is going to be equal to one ninth. So one ninth would be your exact answer of the whole thing. So again, we had to do that three different times. Again, just keep taking derivatives until you no longer get zero over zero or infinity over infinity.